everybody. Welcome to the old Firebird Restoration Station where the stars or the cars are out here. Not me. My name is John. I'm just one that puts these old birds back together with the idea of dragging you along for every step, bumper to bumper, of the journey of doing a complete restoration just in your own two-car garage, proving it can be done and educating you to how that we get this thing accomplished without any major crazy specialty tools and getting it done well or making a very nice car when done. Uh, last go around, we test fitted that out of wheelhouse. Didn't do it how the factory did it from the factory, um, but uh, actually worked out real nice. Really almost an undetectable repair when done. So I'm gonna say it's well, I'm very confident it's gonna work, but I've only got it screwed in place just in case I was wrong. This is a bit of an experiment, but what we're gonna do today though, we're gonna get this outer quarter panel. I got to cut it out of the way, but I got the new one back here. We're gonna determine where to cut it, why to cut it, to make a yeah, basically almost undetectable repair once it's installed. We're not gonna do any lap welding. We're gonna line this thing up and do a nice butt weld and then clean it up and basically very little to no body filler. And when you poke your head inside the car, not obvious someone's done some patching and some repair work. That's the goal. I'm gonna see how it's done. Well, then stay tuned. So what the plan is here, I've got an idea to be able to cut both this to fit this and we're going to do a nice clean butt weld when i came through originally i put about a quarter inch piece of tape to kind of leave myself a lot of material but then it's kind of rough cut that i don't think i'm gonna be able to butt weld to that because i want to make sure both these panels are cut exactly the same so a nice clean setup when done so i'm going to basically cut about a half inch back off the top of this whole quarter panel that when i lay it on top that metal will actually lay over top of this by about a quarter inch it's going to be a little bit tricky, but I'm going to try to cut through both these panels at the same time so I know the line will match up exactly so I get a nice, clean butt weld. So I guess step one will be put my masking tape on here, about a half-inch wide strip, and just cut the whole sail panel, trunk, jam area completely off of that. And then I'm going to do the same thing here to the door jam area. So if I'm going to cut it literally just here on the corner, um, that way I have plenty of material to work with. I'll show you here on the car what I've done, but basically I'm gonna cut right along the edge of this, and then remove the door jam area and give that to my buddy Louie out there in Pennsylvania. He has a 68 Firebird. This whole area here is rotted out on. So that's gonna be coming your way here shortly, buddy. So I wanna let you know it's on its way. Um, but what I wanna show you here, I only got about a quarter inch of metal. So I've gotta cut, like I said, that panel. So when I lay it on top of it, it's gonna overlay this. And I'm gonna try to do the same thing cut through both layers at the same time now obviously we talked about the door last go around it's back on the car i can monitor my door gap between the quarter panel and the door make sure everything looks like it should and the other thing that's really important to me on these cars in particular 67 and 68 they have this body line clean down the door which then continues into the quarter panel so the last thing you want to do is install this quarter panel and that line not be in alignment or parallel to that. So I'm over exaggerating, but imagine you hung that quarter panel and you sight down the car, you got a nice, beautiful line, all of a sudden, skirt makes a turn down or up. Well, I'm gonna highlight this with a piece of tape. So for visuals for me, and then of course you on the camera, you can see what we're doing. Now I'm gonna do the same thing, put a piece of tape or highlight that on the quarter panel. So when I put it on there, I can make sure that dimension is also good or as good as I can possibly get it. Cause we are talking about repop panel so we'll see how that goes my goal is to get that thing perfectly straight or as close to that as i possibly can then once i like all the fitment and the cutting and everything is good then we'll actually pull the quarter panel back off i'll go ahead and weld in the wheel housing so that's the plan we're gonna get started cutting on that get it into place and we'll see how that goes all right, all right. before we get to you carried away here something else i want to keep in mind i want to keep the distance on the trunk jam to the point of the body line the same distance. Now, I don't have the quarter panel to measure off of anymore, but we're going to use my favorite thing here, the uh, measuring masking tape. So, the idea I've done as many times on these cars, lay this on here like this, simple as that. Lay a couple, two, three strips, because this does not stay parallel. These lines actually separate. So, to keep things kind of in alignment or correct width, because the way time we cut this out, well, we're going to make sure we've got the same width when I put it back up on the car. So, this is cheap and easy, so I like that. Now, what we'll do, I can highlight now, trunk jam, trunk jam, trunk jam, and the same here. So, when I peel the tape back, and when I basically peel this back now, then I'll make my cut, and then I can lay this on top of the body, and then I know where that line needs to be. Pretty low tech, but I'll tell you, it works really good. So let's get the tape put on there now and get this thing cut out. 
All right, so now what I'm going to do is just peel the tape back. I've got my marks all put into place. I put a cross strap here on to keep my tape parallel to each other. Just kind of peel it loose. And the idea will be here, see if I can do it with one hand and just flip it backwards on itself. Basically just tape it here temporarily until you get everything test fitted. And we'll hope for the best. It's not as cool as opening a Christmas present, I suppose, but it just gives me more reassurance that I've got the thing pretty close to the factory or yeah, the right shape when it's all done, because that's kind of important. Sticky. Okay, there we go. Now that's folded up out of the way. Now I got my top area here all clean, ready to go. So now just run a strip of tape across the whole top of the body line and let's get this cut on the other side of the tape. cut out here what i've done here is a little highlight mark there and there i'm going to put my piece of tape on here we're going to talk about using it for a reference you can really see the contrast it's a really sharp line that's the thing that i want lined up there with the door so we're going to put our piece of tape here for visibility so we can keep a visual on it and i'm going to go ahead and do the same thing here to the door body line got that all done got a nice highlight mark there and on the door next thing we're going to do is a little bit of prep work here clearly cutting this car apart it's a unibody you're going to start making things move and shift around we talked about in the very beginning of this whole series. This is my frame jig, bubble level, whatever. This is how I'm going to take all my points of reference. So I know at this point, just even looking at it, this quarter panel is kind of dropped because there's nothing here for support anymore. So I want to get that adjusted to the right height before trying to test fit this. That's going to make my health life a whole heck of a lot easier because, well, I need it at the right height to begin with. The other thing we're also going to check, I discussed previously, the trunk floor kind of dropped. It's only probably about an eighth of an inch compared to side to side, but I'll show you. But we're going to lift it back up into place, get the frame at the right height. Then we're going to adjust the quarter panel and kind of lock it into place. And then we can start test fitting our, I guess you say, skin piece that we have made here. Okay, right now we're at 23 and just, uh, just under a half. So I need just a little more than an eighth inch of elevation to get this right. So basically I'm going to move that little hand on the jack, move that thing up just a little bit and see what we can get. And again, my number needs to be 23 and 5 eighths. Uh, there's 23 and a 16th shy, so a little more. Now, I don't want to jack it up enough where it starts pulling it off my jack stands in the front. Oh, just a... And there we go. 23 and 5 eighths. All right, we've got this adjusted 23 and 5 eighths in, and I'm happy about that. So next thing is I need to get this here. When I originally started this project, I haven't moved the car body. So these are my original numbers. So I do know that this would be 34 and a 16th from here to here. And I'm going to tell you right now, it's most definitely not there. So we're going to get away to get this thing propped up into place. But let's see how far off we are. Okay, and our measurement here for the quarter panel is, let's see, just shy of 33 and 3 quarters. So I need to bring this panel up just a little bit to get my 34 and a 16th. All right, so how I plan to adjust is pretty simple. A chunk of scrap, it's got a little angle on the side of it here. Actually, this piece I used for doing my plug weld video. We're gonna set this up inside here. We got a tape right and take the clamp here to the gutter and hold it in place. And hopefully, get the dimension right. But good news is it's fully adjustable. That's never going to happen again. 34 and a 16th. All right, so our prep work is set. Our trunk floor is the right height. 
our quarter panel trunk jam opening or gutter area is at the correct height. We got our piece of tape on our door for our reference point there. Door gap looks phenomenal and good. So I'm gonna say we're great there. Um, well, through primer, not necessarily a requirement at this point yet, but I did do that too. So next thing is I'm gonna pick that thing up and see how bad or how good that fits. get going here this is that tape thing we did earlier before i cut it all apart and the reason being was so when i go to put this thing back together i knew my width between these two body lines this peak and this peak would be the same as the original or at least the quarter panel because we are seaming this together we don't want it too wide or too narrow so this is a quick easy low tech almost free way to do it now as you can see my mark well we're a little shy we're not there that trunk jam needs to be to that mark that i made on the tape so we'll go ahead and get these all flipped over here, hopefully. Now, I'm sure there may be a, a better way, but I try to keep it as simple as possible. Now, if I lean on this here, look at that. Push that in with my hand, and I think we can get it. Well, almost there, but that's the idea of the tape here. So we lay this in here, give it a push, and then we'll get that one. So, same as this here. We can huh, get a little tired of the tape, it looks like. That ought to work, so I can actually now push that back. I know this line then is where it needs to be once I get held into place, but holding the camera and pushing this at the same time. There we go. Now you can see it will line up. I just got to get a little more body weight into it. So once I get that adjusted right, what I'll do then is cut through both this and this with a single pass. That way, in case I do get a little bit of this, that's okay. It'll go back to get like a puzzle piece and work real good. So that's why I got to get my dimensions this way right and this way right first and then i'll go ahead and cut through both layers all the way through to the front and that gives me a nice clean i guess parallel lines to butt weld to now it's looking pretty good now I, what i did is i went ahead and got it into position i put the camera down and i can actually now show where that line needs to be lean on here and that gets my adjustment what i'm going to do i'll put a couple screws just in the top not too many because i have to fill those holes back in put one in the corner but so far we're talking about that body line on the side of the car i think that's right where it needs to be oh, a really good way to side it but you get the idea i like that super bright visual so i can keep an eye on that because when the car is all done that's what you're going to see when you look down the side of the car so that's looking pretty good my line there is nice this is going to be okay so drop a screw or three in now back here in the back it's a little uh, not quite the right shape kind of thing i don't feel uh, so we're going to do some Oh, metal work and a massage but by the time i cut this this will drop down a little bit it might get me pretty close but i may have to do a little bit of a finagling and adjustments back here but looking pretty good so i think the next thing is i'm gonna drop a couple of screws and get ready to make our cut
Now I got my screws into place. That one there, you see my little lines that are lined up right at the edge. That's good. And by the way, I forgot on the inside here, there's an actual additional brace on the coops only. That uh, makes it kind of hard to drill through, but that's that panel right there. So that's just not gonna work. So I bounced off that, no big deal. Just weld the whole shut when we're done. So now I've got that all drilled, I guess screwed into place. I'm gonna come back here now about three eighths of an inch because I did the quarter inch line from the factory quarter pound, but a three eighths of an inch, I'm gonna try to saw through or say cut off wheel through both of these. That should be our cut to make that fit. Okay, got it all cut apart. Got the tape peeled back and kind of see what we got to work with here. But uh, the line's looking pretty good. I like that gap, someplace for the wire to go. Someone told me that once a long time ago, and I can't agree more. You can actually keep the heat a little bit less to get full penetration of the metal. So it's just my technique. Uh, so I'll show you how it looks when it's all done. But when we're all squared away, I actually buff that nice and smooth. Keeping the heat down is probably the most important trick here, the key to this whole thing. Uh, but when it's all done, though, if you were to sand this car down or sandblast it, you probably wouldn't almost make that seem not detectable from the outside and the inside just the same but this actually all lines up pretty good if i actually push on it here you'll see i can control the gap and i'll get a nice clean line and i'll just go ahead and start butt welding that but unfortunately i need to go refill my tank some moron left it on again all right, well this moron well actually this time i didn't leave the tank on i actually just ran out so i need to go get that a tank exchange so if you guys want to check out some t-shirts down here below depending if you're watching on a computer tablet or maybe your phone or either place it pops up either way you like the gotta save them burrs t-shirt get you one actually pretty good price i said don't make a whole lot of money but love sharing the love for these cars you want to you know, show some support for the channel get you one of those we'll, we'll be right back and we're back got my tank all filled up exchange swapped out ready to go but not ready to burn this in yet because we have the wheel well inside that needs to be welded in first i like the fitment i'm very close to all my lines my gaps nice and clean and tight so i'm good with this I'm good with that I'm going to be putting that back together. It lines up with the wheel well real nice, too, so I don't need to move it. But before I pop this thing back off, there's an area of concern. This is nice AMD stamping, but when it comes back here to this rear contour, now remember, I'm trying to section original to replacement. If I put the entire quarter panel on, this may not be a problem, but, you know, repop parts just don't always work out. There's a dent here. Ignore that. You come across here, you see the body line. What's clear up here? Right now, we're almost lined up, but if I were to actually line these up completely, this panel, get my hand a little better here, that panel is too tall. Uh, so my distance between here and here is more than the actual original quarter panel. So if I were to weld that in place, this is gonna be too high, or this is gonna hang out too low into the tail panel opening. So you can see my little mark here that says cut. So when I pop this thing back off to weld the outer wheelhouse, I'm going to make a little relief cut in this thing here. And we're going to close this gap up. So when I weld it all in, this inside line and that outside line line up. Because right now, let's see if I pull this up where it belongs, that, that bottom part is really hard to see in the camera. But trust me, we're off by a little over an eighth of an inch. So I'm going to make a little relief cut, straighten that thing out. So that's something I'm going to do. And then we'll get that inner fender wheel burned in place. I'll bust it that pretty quick, and then I'll show you how to weld the quarter panel into this. All right, 
but just in case you wanted to see what this all looks like welded in, these are areas that I would weld before putting the quarter panel on. Trunk and jump off if it's been replaced. Go ahead and do all these, a whole lot more room to work. And of course, obviously the radius of the fender well, all the way here to the front and side of where the quarter glass resides. And if you want your spot welds to look like this, when you put them all in there, nice, smooth, and flat, check out the other video. I'll put in a link up here somewhere, whatever. It'll be on there somewhere if you want to see how to do that yourself. You get the ones inside here that connect this brace. Now, I welded from the bottom up there, but this is what that weld looks like from the back side. So it actually, nice, good, solid, flat penetration. A little piece of wire there, but easy cleanup, but you get the idea. Those welds hold phenomenally. Now, the other thing you want to weld before you put the quarter panel on is the trunk drop off area here. You got these welds here you need to do. Now, I'm not going to weld this or this together yet because when I go to put the tail panel on, I want just a little wiggle room out of these parts to get this gap right. But we can go ahead and get the quarter panel put into place, weld up to here, weld across the whole front here, here, and then even a few spots here in the wheel well arch. So next thing is get that put into place. priming behind the scenes with our eight lunch there but we want to put a little something on and keep it from rusting or slow it down but now let's put this into place I'm just going to do a couple little tacks, make sure I like it, then we'll do a little more welding. I'll show you my initial fitment here. Got a couple tacks kind of hold it in place, but checking this out here. And once I show you this, I'm going to rip the tape off because kind of over the whole tape thing, but it's worked perfectly. Lines up there, lines up there. So I can tell you this width, even though as it tapers back now, or that we're right on par where the original piece was. So that's done. That worked. That worked great. Our gap uh, did stay as steady as I'd like. That's a little wider than I'd like. This is kind of more like I had in mind. Got a little wider, but I know a guy. He can probably weld that up pretty good. Um, ideally, the gap would look something similar to maybe this. So about the, not quite the thickness of a cutoff wheel, but close, kind of like right here. This is kind of what I was hoping for, but it didn't quite work right. So i um, not quite sure how I messed that up entirely. But again, not beyond repair, can be done, but a little more finesse in welding that gap. But when it's all done, you won't even see it when we're all finished. And same thing happened here. It lines up real nice. I get right about here. So I had a little bit of a little hiccup or wave in it there. But here's my reference mark. Moved a little bit. But looks pretty good down the door jam. Now here's the thing about it. Uh, quarter panel. My tape. Um, that just works for the great quick reference. I like it. And then even the quarter panel here lines up with the rocker panel pretty nice. I'm going to say I don't think I'm going to do much better. This body line is lining up where it needs to be. So... This gap looks pretty good, so I think I'm gonna weld that pretty easily. Now the top, eh, it got a little wide. So again, I, like I said, I know a guy who can weld that thing shut, but uh, that's the next thing, how to debut weld. Maybe that's a whole separate video, but all I'm gonna do is get this all welded in next, and we'll get you back out here and oh, see what it looks like. I almost forgot this again. Seems to be my Achilles heel. The cut, made that little relief cut, made the panel touch. So my inside line there lines up, and this side lines up. So I got the nice little gap in here. I'll just weld that shut and buff it. 
And that'll actually line up real nice. So I had to notch that just a little bit. So basically about an eighth inch out of the metal. And now those panels line up. So now let's get the butt weld this thing together. Okay, after about 11 billion hours later, I got it all stitch welded in, all happy, all together, and looking pretty decent. Um, you want to see a video on how to do this butt welding? I'll do a little close-up video and release that later, because you know, that might be something you might want to see. But this is how to get the quarter panel put on, how to get it test fitted, and why we do it as a butt weld instead of an actual lap weld or replacing the whole thing. So, got it all in the place. Now, back here in the back, I'm not going to weld this here yet. I want a little bit of adjustability when I go to put the tail panel in because so we've already had to cut this to change the dimensions. So I'm kind of wondering if this dimension is a little out of whack too. Because like I said, this is a repop panel. You know, it just, they aren't perfect. But you can look down, look at the side of the quarter panel. It doesn't warp it with this technique. Um, not any more than I guess you say how the stamping was. So very minimal filler, if anything, is going to be on the face here. All my body work is going to be done up here. But I'm going to get this buffed out and let you see what it looks like when it's all done. But you're going to see the reasoning why here as soon as we get this polished up. And I'll show you inside and out. Well, I got all the buffing all done. That's actually what I was like slow and steady wins the race kind of thing. But as you can see very minor blemishes that will need filled in so this is the reason why i like to do it this way i'm talking about super minimal amount of filler even the quarter panel you keep the heat down low it doesn't warp this face it has a little distortion but we're talking very minimal filler to get this thing squared back up i've got my door jam all adjusted well that thing was cut apart i meant to mention this and i forgot let's just say your door jam wasn't exactly what you wanted while you had that front edge cut out you could actually hammer and change the gap and then do your butt well so you could actually correct your door jam um, gaps. But this one is actually good, so I didn't do anything with it. Um, of course, my tape has come off, but it is actually nice and straight. And even this body line, spot on. So I'm gonna tell you, I like how this is looking really nice. Like I said, if someone ever were to sand this car down in the future, you're not gonna know so I'm gonna put quarter panels. And you really have to look for these little things like this here, super minor amount. So. Guess I'll stop rambling about that, but this is the reason why I do it this way. And then, of course, the other part that I want to show you, when you poke your head inside the car, say you're at the car show, look inside the trunk, well, there's no seam for a patch panel, and there's no weird spots up here. It really looks like a complete quarter panel. Now, there's nothing wrong with seaming them in there. Um, it, it happens a lot. The patch panel sometimes is the more efficient way to take care of the car. Um, this is just my personal preference. So I'm not knocking anybody's doing that, but for me, I like the look of this. It looks cleaner and just, I think, better results when done. And one of the other things I forgot to mention too is I still have all these cool numbers here on the trunk jam by doing it this way. But again, looking really clean. Next go around, well, I gotta do the other side quarter panel. Oh, wait a minute, guess what? Already done. I didn't get the video on that because I can't get the camera between the wall and in there. So I wanted to get the details on this side. I didn't think that far ahead. For some reason, I started there and then I did this one. So that's a good thing because now that's done. Next step, let's get this tail panel cut out. Well, that's a video for another day. There you go, quarter panel all welded in and done. I don't weld the back here yet. I haven't done the wheel well arch yet or the back because I want to be able to have some adjustability when I go to do that tail panel. I also have a brand new trunk deck. So uh, the tail panel right now is keeping my quarter panels in a factory spacing, but my replacement trunk deck, well, it may need some massaging or some correction. So when I get that trunk deck mounted, I'm going to do that when I'm doing the tail panel, use it as an alignment piece, basically. So that's the next go around. So you want to see how that's done, you know, hit the subscribe, like, and share with your friends. You know the routine. And of course, Pritch H, follow me on the journey of the old great pumpkin here and making some great headway. Now, as soon as I get that tail panel in, we're also going to do a tally on how many hours and how much the old spindle meter we've spent so far to get a body shelf all nice and rust free here. So if you got any guess on that, hit me up in the comments just the same. But I'm done. I'm sweating. I'm overheated. And I'm going to get back out here next time. Hopefully it's a whole lot cooler. And let's get that tail panel tackled. We'll see you then.